Greetings, beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Healer, my friend, my lover. I love Him so much. He has changed my life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I would like my wife to just come and greet you for one moment. Praise the Lord. She is my queen. Hallelujah. Wow, good morning, beloved. I am so blessed to have this amazing king in my life. I'd like to greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an honor to be here this morning. And I don't even want to think about going home tomorrow. It just makes me sad. In saying that, I'd like to honor and thank Dr. Murdoch for playing such a huge role in our lives. I want to thank you, Pastor Anna, Pastor Josh, all the leaders and members of this beautiful fellowship. You are beautiful people and you've treated us with so much love, so much respect. We are so humbled and we feel so loved to be a part of this great family of God. So I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I, I sure I speak on behalf of my husband when I say that we are so blessed and honored that you would receive us with so much love. We love you so much. Makes it so hard to go back home. But we are excited because we go back with our batteries charged. Amen. And we bless you for receiving us this well. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Josh. From myself as well, I would like to just give my thanks to Pastor Anna. You've made my dream come true, Pastor. Thank you. And Pastor Josh, you've just been a great host. Thank you for the way you're loving us. And I'm so excited about this relationship. You have family in Cape Town, South Africa now. Amen. We are blessed to be part of the Wisdom Center. Our church is called Global Wisdom Center. And you might ask, Pastor, where did we get the name? We copied it from you. The only reason I did not choose the Wisdom Center is because I did not officially ask Dr. Murdoch if I can do that. And as a son, oh, a great follower of Dr. Murdoch, I felt that it would be dishonor to take a name that a man is using without getting permission from him. And I just honor him and I love him too much to do anything that would bring uh, discredit to my name uh, when it gets to Dr. Mike. He has changed my life, changed my ministry. And so we are blessed to be here. I also just want to greet our whole church is sitting and watching this live in Cape Town, South Africa. So the people of Global Wisdom Center, we love you. Thank you for supporting us and loving us the way you do. We love you and you are precious to us. Praise the Lord. I would love to read from Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1. Let me also say it's such a great honor to see Dr. Murdoch's dad here. Wow, what a blessing. What a blessing. I started honoring my father when I saw how much Dr. Murdoch honors his dad. And it has changed me when I saw how much he loves his father. That it also changed the relationship between my dad and myself, my biological father. Praise the Lord. This morning, I would briefly like to just minister to you or share with you and ask you a question. The title of my message is a question. What kind of a son and a daughter are you? in the house of God. What kind of a son and a daughter are you in the house of God? The Bible teaches us, as Dr. Murdoch says, about people who made right decisions and people who made wrong decisions. The Bible is our wisdom book. And we learn from the lives of others how they've made good decisions and how they have made bad decisions. And we will look at the life of some characters in the Bible and see what kind of sons they were. I'm going to relate to sons 
but it is also to the daughters of the house. Amen. Let me first start by saying how important a father is. I never understood this until late in my life. And I'm so blessed that I can teach my son these things. My son Kyle is 14 years old. My son has the pick of Dr. Mike Murdoch as well on all his apps and WhatsApp. And uh, he's on there and saying uh, he loves Dr. Mike. I have in my heart that we planning as a church for the next hundred years that the name of Dr. Mike Murdoch, when we are long gone, would still be around and the books will still be blessing the people. So we going back and starting a Bible school and I've asked Dr. Murdoch for his permission if we can do this and we will call it Mike Murdoch School of Wisdom but it will be a four-year school teaching from the books of Dr. Mike. Our youth, our sons will continue teaching in it. I said to my boy, when I spoke to him, I said, you're the next Dr. Mike Murdoch of South Africa, my son. So uh, we are blessed that, we can, that they can learn these things so early. I wish I knew it a little bit earlier. But thank God, I'm not that old yet. I'm still a son. Praise the Lord. But the importance of a father, we need fathers in our lives. And Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1 says, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother a wise son maketh a glad father but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother let's just pray heavenly father we thank you for this great privilege of being in the house of god i thank you lord that you have heard my prayers you've answered my prayers i am eternally grateful that i can be in the wisdom center in Fort Worth, Texas. What a privilege and what an honor it is to be here. Thank you, Lord, for the teachings of Dr. Mike Murdoch. Lord, where he speaks on honoring and how that honor has brought me to this place. And Father, I just want to thank you and bless you for the life of Dr. Mike. Thank you for the many lives that has been touched and changed through his ministry. And today I speak a blessing over this house and over this people as they hear your word in jesus mighty name amen and amen <clears throat> we need fathers in our lives a father cannot be substituted by somebody else as a matter of fact in life you cannot be successful without a father you need a father in your life to give you guidance the father is a special person in God's creation so special that God calls himself father a father is so special that God calls himself father a father is an authoritative figure in the plan of God a father has life creating powers within him you are here because of a father someone planted a seed and you are here because of the seed of a father greatness comes from a father a father has the ability to bless you or to curse you and it is biblical fathers understand the power that you have when you speak to your children you have the ability to bless them or to curse them and that can go into their generations let me use from the Word of God uh, Noah plants a vineyard after they have been on the ark and he gets drunk one day and his middle son Ham sees him drunk in the tent and he mocks his dad and laughs at him the other two brothers see what their brother is doing and they go into the tent walking backward with a blanket to cover the nakedness of their father let me say to you whenever you work close to a man of God there are some times you will see his nakedness but Ham mocks his father and 
the next day his dad wakes up and his dad speaks a curse over him for what he did ham if if you read you'll see that ham was the dark skinned boy of noah and ham and noah and noah speaks a curse and noah says to him you because of what you have done you will be a servant and your generations will be a servant to your brothers and through the generations you will serve them well ham is the one who came and settled in ethiopia ethiopia is in africa up until today we're still paying the price for a curse that a father spoke over his son and africa has been servants to the rest of the world and up until today they are the words of a father spoken to a son i want to tell you don't take lightly the authority that god has given a father and you that's a father need to understand the power of your words when you speak over your children so you might say pastor but i didn't have a dad i didn't grow up with a father well thank god for his wisdom because god in your life gives you a relay of fathers isn't that beautiful he gives you a relay of fathers the one passes the baton from the one to the other one to father you because no one man has everything within him to teach you you need different fathers to help you who are those fathers I've been in many churches and some people sit in a church and they say the pastor of this church is not my father and I see that there's a lack of understanding concerning fathers so let me explain to you number one God is our Heavenly Father amen she'll always have a father because God is your Heavenly Father number two you have your father in Christ that is the person who led you to the Lord that is the person who either sat with you or preached a message and you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ that's your father in Christ but that person may not be the person that you are able to reach I got saved in a tent crusade many many years ago but I did not have access always to the man that preached the message but yet he is my father in Christ because I came to know the Lord through that the next father that you will have in your life is your father in ministry this is the father or the person who births you into ministry this is the person who sits with you teaches you how to pray now that can also be the one who led you to the Lord but in many cases I can see how many lives dr. Billy Graham has touched but he could not sit and disciple all of them the Lord had to use a different father to teach many of the people that came to know the Lord under his ministry um, through through discipling them through a different father so you have a father in the ministry then you have your biological father thank God for our biological fathers today I want to honor my dad he's gone home to be with the Lord but it's because of him and my mom that we are serving the Lord we sat and had our Bible reading every night they would sit us down it was hard when they put the television off and said guys you, at six every night put off the television we're gonna sit as a family around the word today I want to honor them and I want to thank God for my biological parents but if you did not God is so gracious that he gives you fathers you also get the substitute father this is a father that can be an uncle it can even be a neighbor that that when your dad was not around he took the place of a father and looked after you and the sad thing about the substitute father they don't get a lot of recognition from people maybe your, your parents has gone through a divorce and your mother got remarried that substitute father is what God has placed there to help you and there's wisdom within him to guide you there was one lady 
who lost her husband when her son was just born. And the medical doctor spoke to her and said to her, I also lost my dad when I was very young and my mother got remarried. And he says, I often thought, what would I have become if I stayed with my biological father? But the, mother my ma my, my, but the man my mother married is the one who inspired me to become a doctor. It's a, it's a substitute father that the Lord will send in to help you. The other father is your father-in-law. There's a wisdom there that you need to learn. Dr. Mike says, if you can look beyond the flaws of a man and extract the gold, your life will be so much richer. Hallelujah. And the challenge with us is that we, we always find fault with our in-laws. My mother-in-law lives with me. Thank God for the teachings of Dr. Mike Murdoch. It has helped me. Praise the Lord. Because Dr. Mike says, anyone who cannot appreciate or love the people who has cared for you most of your life should not be even a friend in your life. Wow. And how many times do we speak against our in-laws, but yet they are parents that God allows into our life to help us. And since I have done that, I've learned so much from my mother-in-law. So God gives us different fathers. And then another father is the father of a church or, a, or an organization. That's the person who started the church or started the organization. So if you are in a church, that pastor might not have led you to the Lord. But when you're part of that church, he is a father to you. He's part of the relay of fathers that God gives you. Why am I sharing this with you? Because there's a different respect when you acknowledge a man as a father. There's a different honor shown to a father. And if you don't acknowledge your pastor as a father, you will not respect him the way he should be respected. So fathers are being placed in our lives by God. The Bible says you will have many instructors but few fathers which tells us you don't only have one father. There's a few of them that God will place in your life to be a blessing and to help you and to guide you in life. What kind of a son or a daughter are you to a father? The first son that I would like to look at is found in Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. The Bible says there was a man who had two sons and the one found that he could not live with his dad and in the house anymore. We know him as the prodigal son. And he left the house and went his own merry way. I spoke a little bit this morning in men's talk about those who destroy the work of the ministry. And one of the people who destroy the work of the ministry are those who leave you. There are different reasons why people leave. But there are people who cannot handle an offense. If you were here Thursday, you would hear the stages of disloyalty. But there are people who cannot handle an offense, so they want to leave. Those people become dangerous to the house of God. Because even in not saying anything, they still say a lot. So you find them in the mall, and you speak to them and say, How's things at church? And they say, No. I'm not at the church anymore. What? What's happened? The, the next question, why, what happened? No, I don't want to say anything. You've just said a thousand words by saying, I don't want to say anything. You've just told him, I cannot stay under that man's leadership anymore. He's not a good pastor. Those are things you're saying when you leave. And this is what the prodigal son did. He just found himself in a place where he said, I can't learn from you anymore. I know enough. It's a very dangerous place for you to get to. I pray to God that you do not have the heart of the prodigal son when he left. I pray you have his heart when he came to his senses and he knew by himself repentance 
can restore things for me. And he came and he repented before his dad. And his dad received him with open arms. Let me say to you, there is power in your repentance. Just say, I am sorry. People cannot say they are sorry. The next son that I want to look at is his brother, the eldest son, who's the brother of the prodigal son. This kind of son does everything well in the house. This kind of son looks after the things of his father. But this son, the danger of this son is that he has no grace for his brothers and sisters. He loves his father, but he's got no grace for his brothers and sisters that's in the house. So if someone left and came back, can you imagine if the prodigal left and came back and his dad was not at home and his brother found him? There would be no ring upon his finger. They would have told, what are you doing here? We don't want you here. Now, the elder son, because he does things right and everything, there is no grace within him. There's no mercy shown to his brothers and sisters. As a, as a matter of fact, he develops self-righteousness. He becomes self-righteous. And he becomes judgmental and has a judgmental attitude towards people who has gone astray. Never forget that this is the house of God. We work with broken people. We need to love people. God is about people. You were also broken when God found you. So I pray the kind of son that you are, that you'll have the grace and the mercy of the Father and reflect the Father towards other people. The next son I'm going to look at briefly is a stubborn and rebellious son. That was Absalom. Absalom was a stubborn and rebellious son. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 21 and verse 18 that if a son is stubborn and rebellious against his parents, take him to the elders of the city. Can you believe this? And then the Bible says, take him and stone him to death because God will not allow this kind of evil amongst his people. Stubborn and rebellious. I will not allow myself to be told by anyone. You want things your way. You have the independent spirit where you do things your way. No matter what the head of the house is saying, no matter what your pastor is saying, you want to do things your way. And if you listen to Thursday's teaching, I speak a little bit about the independent spirit and where you go from there once your spirit is independent. The next son that I want to speak about is our great example. He is the perfect example of a son. He is the beloved son. And this is what God called Jesus. When he went for baptism, the Bible says in Luke chapter 3, the heavens opened and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I wonder if Dr. Murdoch can say that about you as a father. This is my beloved son and my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Now we all want the title of beloved son. None of us want to be known as the stubborn and rebellious. None of us want to be known as the prodigal son or even the elder son that is self-righteous. But these are the words of a beloved son. A beloved son says, I don't do my own thing. I do what I hear my father says. Those are the words of a beloved son. And if you want to be known as a beloved son, that should be your attitude. I don't do my own thing. I do what I hear my father says. This is the words of a beloved son. Not my will, but your will be done. Those are the words of a beloved son. I pray to God that your heart's desire would be 
to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, a beloved son in the house of God. That is an example to others of, I wanted to do it like this, but because Dr. Murdoch said I must do it like that, not my will, but the will of my father be done in the house of God. The beloved son. It's not easy to always follow all the instructions. But a father sees things that you don't see. A father knows things that you don't know. It is my prayer today huh, that you would all have the heart and become beloved children of this house. A beloved child is a loyal child, is a faithful child, is a child that follows instructions without even questioning it. And so today, as you stand to your feet, I would love to just pray over you and pray over this house that the spirit and the heart of the beloved son would drop in our spirits that our father would say this is my son and my daughter that I am well pleased in hallelujah Heavenly Father we thank you for the privilege of gathering around your word I spoke to the people what you wanted me to say spirit of the living God and I pray for them today that their hearts would be knitted to this ministry that their heart would be knitted to the vision of Dr. Mike Murdoch. That they can say in their hearts, I am a beloved son. Not my will be done, but the will of my father who has the ability to bless me or curse me. But we want the blessing of the father of the house. And so father, we speak like Jesus did. I don't do what I want to do. I do what I hear my father says bless this house bless this church I thank you for connecting us to them in Jesus mighty name amen and amen the Lord bless you and as we go back to South Africa we only have good news to tell the people of how we've been loved and cared for the Lord bless you thank you so much Pastor.